What's up, man? Hey. Oh, how are you doing today? Well, man. I suppose you are. Okay. Why is the camera on the side? I turned it the other way around. Okay, yeah, better now. It's better now, better now. Oh, oh okay. How have you been? It's been, it's been a long time since I've seen you. It's been a long time since we catch up. Indeed, brother. Well, I'm good. I am uh, I'm fending for the betterment. <laughs> That's, That's the ultimate. Mm -hmm. It's very good to see you among the lives. My pleasure, man. I like your head warmer. It's pretty basic and simple. Uh, thank you, thank you. It's a very, like, since, since the last time I've been in Africa, I haven't get to catch up with you. And today I want to catch up with you. I want to get to know. How's your work schedule been? How's your work schedule been? Let's do it. Say it again. How's your work schedule? How's it been? Oh, well, uh, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. You know, bittersweet, I'll say. <laughs> Uh, but holistically, um, it's been a wonderful one, I must tell. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Oh, wow, wow. It's definitely nice to see you. I'm not gonna lie. And apart from that, I, I want to get to know who's Mubarak, man, the tallest man in Africa, man, the tallest mother in Africa, doing it. What got you started? Like, why do you start this? Uh, oh, well, uh, I'll. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, so um, I can hear you, but your video is actually paused. I don't know. I, I can hear you, but then your video is paused. Okay, so um, I think we should just delve right into it. Uh, we just type right into it. Uh, uh, well, um, oh yeah, I think it's perfect now. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, going back to your first question of who uh, Bakari Mubarak is, uh, basically, uh, well, I, I like to talk about myself a lot, and uh, <laughs> even in as much as I don't like to blow my own trumpet, uh, I still like to um, to talk a little bit about myself, and I'll start by saying uh, Bakari Mubarak is a is an African um, avant garde. You know, uh, I think I am one of the few young African uh, uh, who are actually truly patriotic, you know, who are pretty much um, invested in seeing Africa a great place again, you know, like we've always known. Uh, and of course, um, I, in recent time, I co-founded Expedition 54, uh, and uh, but basically, I would say my background is modeling. I happen to be the tallest model in Sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, really, that came by in 2020. At the time, I was about the same, uh, 2016, I beg your pardon, I was about the same height with the tallest model, tallest professional model at the time. You know, and I kept on that record by being the, the, the about, you know, growing a little bit taller uh, at about six, eight, six, nine, you know, in the two years after, you know, making me uh, the same height with the tallest professional model at the time as well. You know, in fact, the current one, still the current uh, tallest professional model in the world at the time. Uh, so yeah, that's my background, but basically uh, I've been able to leverage on my unique status as a model to promote the African culture, you know, whilst incorporating art, you know, um, as well as, um, you know, other social cultural activities uh, and uh, business, you know, entrepreneurship, and uh, as well as, um, uh, you know, tourism. You know, so in, in, in the past years, I've been able to work with quite a number of entities, uh, both national, uh, uh, you know, locally and internationally, uh, been able to uh, work as advocates, you know, for a few uh, subject matters under uh, some other entities as well, you know, including some diaspora uh, entities. Uh, most recently, I was uh, bestowed the honor as a goodwill ambassador to the World Fashion Exhibition, uh, which team happens to be the uh, Africa is now, 
you know, the World Fashion Exhibition actually preaches sustainable fashion, you know, across the world. And they have, they have represented in about 70 countries around the world. Uh, by so doing, in recent time, their theme for the year is Africa is now. And one of their major focal points is actually kicking against child mortality on the African continent, as well as um, women empowerment. So, uh, you know, by virtue of my endeavor with them, uh, my company, Expedition 54, my co-founded company, uh, received the World Fashion Exhibition Nigerian franchise. And we hope to tentatively produce here in Nigeria uh, by August, thereabouts. And um, we definitely hope to host um, designers from over 60 countries around the world. Wow. If that do, wow. if that does justice to the introduction. <laughs> wow. Let's just say it is. Before we go on, I hope all of you in the chat watching this, you know, coming here and dropping by, we can get something going with this, with this, what this brother got going on. But even deeper question: When do you realize, you know, damn, I'm getting tall. Like I'm not average. I'm not average tall person. Like what age do you realize that? Well, I must confess, I think uh, this was around, um, so this was during, this was while I was in my first year in the senior secondary school. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what, you know, high school, basically, as we call it here, um, senior secondary school. Yeah. Uh, I was in my first year at the time, that's, uh, I was in my SS1. And so people tell me I'm pretty tall, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't totally believe them, but until I tend to see someone who is so tall or someone that seems to me as very tall, and I come close to them and behold, I am taller than they are. <laughs> then I realized I was really, really tall in the real sense of it. So yeah, that was, that was how I started getting to, um, to know that I'm pretty tall. You know, and funny enough, that still happens, you know, a couple of times, uh, even in recent time, you know, I tend to see people and I think they're really tall, you know, I, I almost think they're taller than myself. And when I get closer to them, I realize I am still pretty tall, <laughs> taller than they are, you know. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I got to realize that I was, um, you know, not the average, uh, not the average tall. <laughs> So, did you say right. on, like, when you like, when you like, when you think or sister, that's when you realize you're getting caught. They're about, yeah. So, They're about, at about that age. Mm -hmm. So, if you were never in Africa, if you're not born in Africa, do you think you would have gone down the route of modeling or you would have gone down the route of basketball? Oh, well, um, so this is something I really have a reservation for. You know, because funny enough, so many people tend to ask me if I play basketball before they even ask what my name is, you know? It's so bizarre like that. But I think the reservation I have about that is the fact that I think it is stereotypic that people automatically think tall people should or must play basketball, you know? And um, that's in fact one of the things that I am trying to preach, you know, with my own embodiment, you know, to say to people, uh, you don't necessarily have to play basketball, you know, uh, but of course, you know, going by the stereotype, I think I might be a basketballer or I might be pursuing uh, a career in that space, you know, if I were in the West. But of course, um, I decided to choose otherwise, you know, uh, when I started having a mind of my own. You know, truth be told, I always liked basketball growing up. You know, I used to have a ball, a very nice ball that I take to school at the time. And I played to an extent, even up until my third year in university. I had a coach who was coaching me and whatnot. But when I had a mind of my own, I got to realize that um, we can be great doing other things besides playing basketball. You know, and we could be iconic doing quite a number of other things, you know, that appeals to us, you know, or that um, that resonates with our essence as human rather than just play basketball. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. It's, a good, 
Because you get to yeah, that. Like, because like, most people in, a, in America or yeah, whatever around, around the world, if you don't play basketball but you talk, they'll say, oh, you're wasting your height or something like that. But sometimes, you know, yeah, but sometimes it's not really about, oh, you have to play basketball because you're tall. You just have to. Exactly. There's, There's more purpose, purpose to you just being tall. You know what I'm saying? saying? Exactly, exactly, bro. I agree with you, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I feel the same way. And that's why I think, um, like I said earlier, that it is stereotypic to always think that everybody must play basketball because they're tall. You know. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. A lot of people always mm-hmm. know, you know, oh, you have to play basketball. So, your expedition company, what, what, what do you? What, what, what started? Like, why do you start it? Like, what gave you to start it? Like, okay, so, um, you see, I have always been very, I have always been very passionate about unification. So when I mean unification, I mean Africans on the continent and Africans in the diaspora, like yourself. Yeah. You know, I've always been very passionate about this connection, about this integration. Right about the, and this comes from a very profound place, you know, a place where I know for a fact that uh, this is going to constitute a lot of change, a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, progress, you know, and this go, goes both ways, you know, here on the African continent, uh, in the motherland, and as well over there as well, because uh, quite a lot of. Africans in the diaspora have been marginalized over time, you know, uh, but that unity, that unification would help you trace yourself, refine, you know, uh, be able to to understand who you truly are, you know, rather than uh, the, the entire bamboozled uh, information that's been given to us, you know, and as well as uh, on truly understand the essence of our existence, you know. And, uh, and as well, you know, or most importantly, uh, the essence of uh, 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 the, 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 the economical viability of this um, of this of, of, of this endeavor, basically. So uh, this was actually one of the things that actually drive uh, or that birthed Expedition 54. You know, we thought the harm that has been done to our reputation as Africans is a lot. You know, a lot of people just because, and this is basically solely because of the propaganda. I can barely, I, I, can, I can tell you, I beg your pardon, I can tell you 100%, you know, categorically that 80% of everything you hear about Africa is just, they're, they're basically lies. It's just birthed out of propaganda. I tell you this, so many things, so many things are not accurate about our continent. You know, and this, as a matter of fact, is regarded the cradle of humanity. Africa is the cradle of humanity. This is where humanity started, proven over and over again, right? And we still have the genuineness, you know, and the world actually, if you'll agree with me, the world actually derives inspiration from us, right from time, since inception, from the music to the cuisine, to, 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 to our mythologies, to everything, you know, to our style, our fashion and the likes. So what am I trying to say in essence is, we thought it was pertinent at this point in time to show that there is more to the African continent and the people of Africa, right? And even our brothers and sisters in the diaspora than the slavery um, narrative that we've been always that that that, they, that 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 the world emphasize on, right? And one of those things is business, right? Business endeavor, right? Rather than the West actually um, always uh, 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 emphasizing how much they needed to help us or how much they have so-called help us, you know, with our own resources, you know, even though it's hiding in plain sight. It is very pertinent that we actually show that we could, we have so much resources on the African continent and we can take on business endeavor, you know, with other parts of the world. So really, um, in, in a nutshell, the vanguard of our endeavor at Expedition 54 is creating that platform to integrate and connect African businesses with other businesses around the world. And we have worked on a tech product, 
you know, to actually drive this process as well. But ultimately, we are emphasizing on African diaspora businesses, connecting African diaspora businesses with other businesses around uh, 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 Africa, basically. Very good, very good. So, what, what would you call your strength? Like, you yourself, for kids that are watching home right now, for kids that are watching around the world, what would you call, your, what would you call as your greatest strength as a professional? Well, I'd say one of my greatest strengths is the essence of understanding the power of our minds, right? That's very powerful. And the fact that um, I have now been able to, over time, work on having a mind of my own, you know? Uh, I just got off the call with a friend of mine, you know, who we've been having conversations we engage about uh this subject matters a lot right and i said something i said whatever happens in the physical must have happened in the metaphysical realm right so as a matter of fact say it again you might expand it a little bit on that of course of course and i'll just give you a scenario right so have you ever at any point in time um for instance, probably you just had, you just finished eating, right? Yeah. And then you have a place right on your dining table. And then you intend to take it to the kitchen, you know, put it in the zinc and wash it, right? But you actually totally forgot. But you think that you have actually done that. Oh. Does that have ever happen to you? That Does it happen to you? That happens a lot. Exactly. So that, you have actually executed that in the metaphysical realm That's so really whatever happens must have whatever happens in the physical must have happened in the metaphysical realm before we came here today to have this conversation you had you, there was a premeditated thought oh, sure. about this conversation sure. even before you spoke to me about it before you invited me over for it for right sure. We had a picture of this moment, this actual moment that we're actually now living in at the time. We had this picture somewhere in our head, and this has now manifested. So that's what I mean by whatever happens in the physical must have happened in the metaphysical realm. Fair enough. So do you believe in picking your moments? So, fair enough. Do you, believe, do you believe in picking your moments, or do you let the moments just be? Like, you let the moments roll, or do you believe in picking your moments? So there are two ways to it. There are two ways to this. This is a very profound question. Uh, I think I love that question a lot. But you give. Uh, I'll be glad if you permit me to to, uh, to explain a little bit more, right? There are two ways to it. And I think uh, the first thing is that um, I am of the opinion that um, it is pertinent that we choose a course, right? that we actually, as a human, we are so powerful, you know, an average human has so much energy that if converted into kinetic energy can power an entire city, yeah. right? So that's how much energy that we possess. That's how much frequency we've got as humans, right? And we cannot afford to actually let life just happen to us. We must direct life however we want. We must chart a course for ourselves. You know, we must chart a course for ourselves. So could you give me a moment? I think my homie is here, and I'd like to just, um, uh, you know, open the door very quickly. Just a moment. It's okay, it's okay. Just take a moment. It's all right. Man, chat, it's been a really, really wonderful talk. I'm learning a lot about life. You know, I'm still young, and I'm still trying to learn. I'm still trying to meet people. I'm still trying to... I'm still trying to hang out with people and I'm learning a lot about Oh, yeah, people. pardon me. It's all good. It's all pardon good. me for, for the breaking transmission. I'm just, I'm just speaking to my chat. I'm speaking to my chat. I'm telling them how I feel about this moment, you know? Because, like, in Spanish, oh, right. Spanish people always say for the moment that you pick your moment, they start a line, and everything feels amazing. Like, it just feels like it's meant to be. And it's not like Absolutely. It's sometimes it's not like it's even meant to be. Like it's not like it's meant to be. It's because you pick your moment, you execute. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. I agree with you 100. percent And um, it's high time we begin to understand how much integral part of the universe we are as humans, as an entity, right? And the fact that we have, so we don't just fall from the skies. We have 
the DNA is actually composed of information, strands of so much data passed down generations, right? So these things didn't just happen, you know, by chance. Basically, we must, it is very pertinent that we choose a course, right? And we followed through. We have that liberty. God Almighty gave us so much liberty, so much power, you know, to be in control, right? So some people have thought about this technology, and that's the reason why it is useful to us today, right? Some people thought about this at a certain point in time. Some people thought about the World Wide Web, you know, in which we leverage on for this kind of communication, right? These are impossible things, but they were making, they were made possible by some visionaries, some people who were seeing that in their air, in their mind, but they were able to manifest that. So this takes, um, this, this, this takes, it goes beyond just having a feeble mind or being feeble minded. It takes you to actually take charge and drive. You are always, you should always know that you are in the driving seat or the driver's seat. You must drive your own life, basically. Amazing. Amazing. Right. That's, 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 a, that's a big, big word, right? There. You must feel like you're in control of your life. life. You can't just let life happen to you. Very Absolutely. Very amazing. Very amazing. Absolutely. It's nice to hear all these things because, hey, I'm, I'm still young and I'm still trying to grow in a different part of life and I'm still, you know, I'm still exploring my, I'm still exploring my options about life, you know, because obviously, you know, I'm still a young guy. But yeah, apart from that, what does a day in your life look like? So right now, proper day, like a busy day and a day without being busy. So I know you're probably a very, very busy man and obviously, I want to know where your schedule is. I want to know, living your shoes. Oh, so well, well, in honesty, um, Basically, I, I do quite a number of things, as, as, as you have confirmed, you know. Um, in fact, quite a number of things that the public do, do not know, you know, um, uh, with regards to or in the entrepreneurship uh, space. You know, like I said earlier, I'm an entrepreneur. I do quite a number of things, you know, aside um, co-founding a company called Expedition 54. So I'll just give you a snippet, or would I say, um, you know, a backstory uh, about my uh, my typical day. You know, so when I wake up in the morning, I try as much as possible. In recent time, most recently, I started eating really clean. You know, uh, I try as much as possible to eat very clean because, uh, like they say, you are what you eat, you know. So um, in the morning, when I wake up, I try to have uh, at least two uh, two bulbs of, of garlic, you know, they're about, uh, uh, um, you know, because it helps so well uh, with um, blood digestion and, you know, it helps you, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it helps the art as well. Garlic and ginger, these are very two very potent, uh, 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 you know, uh, root plants, basically, that one could actually administer every, every other day. So I try to, 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 to chew some garlic or to brew it as a tea, you know, uh, drink up and as well, uh, you know, drink a lot of water very early in the morning. Uh, and, you know, uh, at about 9, 9, 9.30 WAT uh, in Nigeria, you know, 9 a.m. WAT thereabouts, uh, within that window, I talk, I touch base with my partner. Uh, you know, who we co-founded my company together, yeah. you know, because we got quite a number of projects at hand at the time, you know, one of which I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the World Fashion Exhibition, which we were galvanizing to produce at the time, uh, you know, and uh, by so doing, we touched base, you know, to talk about um, all uh, the, the task of the day, basically, you know, and I endeavor. You know, uh, I, being the, the co-founder of the company and uh, acting in the capacity as a, uh, as a chief executive officer of the company as well. Uh, as, as, aside that, uh, I have a few other endeavors as well. You know, I run um, a certain uh, business called African Market Up. You know, we sell uh, a few handcrafted African paraphernalia. We sell uh, canvas prints. Uh, as well, on the side, I tend to broker art as well, you know, um, I, I do quite a number of activities uh, in my capacity as a model as well. So yeah, uh, I just work on 
all of the tasks of the day, you know, and usually I always have my schedules ahead, you know. Um, so you have to. In fact, a, a week ahead, two weeks ahead, I try as much as possible to have uh, my schedules. So in the past few weeks, uh, I was I was out of town for a few um, official assignments, you know, towards uh, some of our uh, uh, projects uh, at Expedition 54. As well, um, I, I also had to visit the family in Choir State. I had to visit my parents uh, 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 just just a couple of days ago. And um, here I am, you know, having this conversation. And this is also an integral part of my life, you know, because um, quite a number of last things that we have to do at Expedition 54, some could be remote, you know, because of the fact that uh, we have conversations with um, international uh, individuals and entities as well. So by virtue of that, um, I do some virtual meetings like this. Uh, if I'm not doing physical meetings or um, executing activities physically. Very good. So, right. so with this, I almost said, man, if you have to, like right now, I will play this or that question. If you, if you have to move out of Nigeria, where would you, where would you move to? Say again? If you have to move, like any other country around the world, or in Africa, like if you have to choose another place as home in Africa, where would you have to choose to be home in Africa? Like oh well, well. Um, I think I think I really like Rwanda. Rwanda is actually um, a very interesting place. You know, pretty pretty eco friendly, and Rwanda is one of the neatest countries in the world. Wow. Contrary to popular opinion, yes, they won't tell you this uh, in the mainstream media. But Rwanda is one of the neatest countries in the world. Currently, the neatest country in Africa at the time you know so uh yeah i'd say rwanda uh as well as uh, zanzibar is a fantastic place as well you know uh, maldives is a great place as well <laughs> there's so many beautiful places in africa and you begin to um, you begin to wonder where you want to stay you know it's 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 very difficult to actually choose uh, you know so many beautiful places in, Nigeria, in, in Africa as a whole. You know, there are, we have 54 beautiful countries on the African continent. You know, contrary to how some people think Africa is a country, <laughs> you know. So uh, you, when, when you go to Zanzibar, when you go to Zanzibar, for instance, you see, you would find waters that are as blue as the skies. You know, I'm not even capping. It's, it's that beautiful. It's that beautiful, you know. So uh, I, I'll say I'll say um, it's difficult, but I'll, like I said earlier, Rwanda isn't a bad choice, you know. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Right, and because of its proximity to a couple of other places as well. Yeah. So with Rwanda being very nice places and all these amazing things in Africa, for for me, if I had to choose a place to stay, I think it's South Africa. But, but because, because of the hype about it and all these things about it, obviously, because it's a nice place. And but with yeah, Maldives, where is Maldives, Maldives close to? Because I really don't actually know that. You know, I'm gonna be very. You know, I'm gonna let myself. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put myself out there right now. I don't know where Maldives is, but I know about Maldives. Where's Maldives? If I'm pronouncing. So Maldives is actually uh, one of the Indian Ocean islands. You know, here in Africa. Really? So what yeah. country is next to? Like what country? Say again. What country is it close to? Okay, uh, like I said, there are quite a number of uh, Indian Ocean islands. You know, it's it's really not far from uh, not far from. Uh, uh, there's a place called there, there's another island called Madagascar. Yeah. There is oh, all, Madagascar. yeah and the, Madagascar. yeah yeah. So uh, there, there's, there's also Mauritania. There's there is also. Uh, uh, a few other countries pretty close, like Zanzibar, as well as um, uh, as well as uh, uh, Gambia, as well as the uh, so to to the east. You, the, to the east is actually Zanzibar, Tanzania, uh, uh, Kenya, Uganda, and the likes. And of course, to the west, the likes of Nigeria, the likes of. Uh, you know, uh, Ghana, the likes of Ivory Coast, and the likes. Yeah. Of course, of course, of course. So, one day, right now, 
Mubarak, Mubarak is done working, working everything. everything. What, what would your what, what would your what would people, people know you for? What would people what would what, would, what, what do you want, want people to know you for and speak about you about? Is a question. Mubarak is also well, I want I actually be I want to be one of the greatest greatest forces you know that uh, brought about an African Renaissance you know in all ramifications you know business wise consciousness as well as well as you know the African Renaissance in a nutshell like I, like I said I am an African avant garde I am a visionary you know so by virtue of that I want to be one of the pioneers of the new Africa you know that we yearn for. You know, uh, that wouldn't happen if until we become as conscious as we should be about all of these subject matters, you know, about where we came from, where we are at the time and where we are going, you know. So um, I want to be one of those um, um, pioneers. Before you go, I'll say something. I know, like, I obviously, I like, like the way you talk about yourself. But what I, I don't want you to do no more is... Call yourself, yourself a god because you know you don't, you don't want to give yourself a characteristic of god because you know but obviously yeah, i understand i understand how passionate about, about your work because obviously being a god is just something very big you know and for some people so, they'll take uh, it away pardon me i'd like to explain that so an avant god right yeah. has a meaning and the meaning of an avant god oh. is someone who is a revolutionary you know, okay. someone who brings about new ideas, someone who is a futurist, someone who pioneers new ideas, new, uh, 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 very impactful innovation. That is what an avant garde is. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. See, now yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hold my hands up for That's fine. That's fine. No offense taken. No offense taken. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. What's, What's it called? called? If, if you, you right now, like, like with your expedition, you say you want to work with other companies around the world. Give, give us a little insight what companies are you working with. Like, so at the time, uh, like I said to you earlier, we, we, we're currently working with the World Fashion Exhibition yeah. uh, that is currently uh, situated around 70 countries in the world already. Uh, we have worked with the um, Nigerian Scholars in Germany Association. Uh, we've also worked with SIPI, uh, that's actually a multinational, uh, 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 a multinational um, non-for-profit uh, sponsored by the U.S. Congress. As well, we, we have worked with, um, uh, we've worked with quite a number of entities. Yeah. So you have to work right. with any brand around the world. Like if you have to right. obviously partner with a brand around the world, what brand will you go for and why? Oh really? Um, so like we like like I said earlier before now, uh, we are very passionate about creating opportunities for businesses on the African continent to connect and integrate with other businesses, right? But I also emphasized that one of our focal points, or would I say one of the things we emphasize, is to actually connect African businesses with African diaspora businesses. So I'd say um, there are quite a number of African diaspora businesses out there, you know, that are fantastic. You know, when you look at what Rihanna is doing, uh, uh, Fenty, one of the one of the most successful uh, 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 one of the most successful product lines, you know, when it comes to cosmetics in the cosmetic space. You know, that's, 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 they are, they are now in Africa. They have now integrated into Africa. They're in a few countries in Africa. Yeah, they're now currently in, in a few countries in Africa, including Nigeria, you know. So, um, really, really, uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be, to, to, to exhibit any form of favoritism, but I'll say we are very open to working with any entity that is uh, 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 impactful. Of course, to human endeavor. I'll put it like that. You know. <laughs> yeah, I always say, I always say something about this. Yeah. As human, we have something that you like deep down you know. You know, I would love to work with this company. If you have to pick because you, know, you don't know who's watching right now. If you have to pick one company. I agree. You have to pick one yeah. company that you could work with right now, right now, 
based, based on your info, based, based on your ideas and your information that you gather, which, which company would you choose? I would like you to choose because who knows? This this video we do it right now by going viral. Who knows? Right, I agree with you. I agree with you. And um, I'd say um, I would. I would really like to work with. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll mention a couple. You know, uh, I'll mention a couple. Right, I would really like to work with. Or we would rather really like to work with. Uh, would like to work with um, a company, a company such as um, Google. Google. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, because Google is actually um, a company, or would I say, a corporation that has cracked um, a lot around data. You know, uh, around human data you know, uh, uh, by virtue of all of their products. You know, I'd also like to work with a company like, um, I'd also like to work with a company like, um, say, one of these top, uh, uh, one of these top fashion brands like LVMH. You know, uh, they have always, they have always drawn inspiration from African fashion because at Expedition 54, we are focusing on some African. Uh, we're focusing on some uh, 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 some 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 projects that are actually export oriented around the fashion space, uh, majorly fabric, majorly African fabrics. You know, uh, uh, so I'll say to you that um, an LVMH. You know, because um, they have always drawn inspiration from the African continent, even though they don't give credit to the African continent, you know. Uh, I think it's going to be a whole new down to uh, to do it right with them. <laughs> Since they don't, right. give, they don't give, give credit to the African continent, why, like, what, what, makes it, what makes you want to work with them? Because obviously, if they don't give credit to Africa, they, want, they, they might want to work on the... I know you're a big name, obviously, and you obviously you get what, what, you, what, you, what, you, what you deserve. But, but the thing, thing is, for every other country that they take, what's, what's it called from? Like that they take, uh, what's it called? Uh, like the culture from the, the clothing, from the cooking, from whatever. What would you want to advise them to do? So to be honest with you, uh, it's, it's, it's been a thing that has been in existence for so long. You know, like I said to you, the world draws inspiration from the African continent, from every single thing. Every single thing, you know. Um, look at the the you are in current. You're, you're currently in the United States, yeah. right? You could tell that the Washington Obelisk is an inspiration from it's it's an inspiration from the whole Egyptian uh, 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 empire, basically. You know, you've seen how you you've you've gone. I'm, I can tell you've been to a few museums and you've seen how many of our. Um, artifacts, you know, our treasures of our ancestors have been taken to this um, to these museums around the world, right? So really, um, talk about several other things, you know, several other knowledge. You know, I'll tell you something today. I'll give you um, a takeaway, right, or a take home, right? The current existential battery technology, right, yeah. is actually associated with cobalt. It's made with cobalt, right? The highest deposit of cobalt is on the African continent, Democratic Republic of Congo, to be precise. Yeah. We have uranium here. We have gold here. All of the gold that there is in the world is right here, right? But they would come and tell you that uh, the United Kingdom has the highest gold reserves. Where did they get it from? Africa. Where? Africa. They stole it from us. They literally stole it. You, you you get my point. There is more. There is more statues. There is more. There is more statues of lions and lioness in the United Kingdom than there is actual lions and lioness on the African continent. This is where they all get the inspirations from, <laughs> right? Amazing. So really, it has always been like that. Um, they don't give enough credit. The world doesn't give enough credit. This is where you find the best of the best coffee products in the world. Right? I mean, the, yeah, the raw materials, the raw products, right? 
This is where you find them. This is where you find cocoa. You know, talk about Nigeria, our country, talk about Ivory Coast, talk about Ghana. But guess what? They ship these things back to, they take it away and ship it back to us. And they sell it for so much, so like they sell it for a hundred times more. So I think this has to do with um, having more information as regards how global or international dynamics works and international uh, 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 international relationships, you know, or would I say bilateral relationships between nations, right? So what happens to an African country, you know, having consensus or reaching a consensus with any other country in the world to come to Africa and put a plant, a chocolate plant here on the African continent? It could be in Nigeria, it could be in Ghana, it could be in Ivory Coast. And on no occasion would you ship any of our raw material. You must actually make them here. You put a plant here, employ Africans that are living on the continent to do the work and then export it anywhere else in the world. That's, that's an approach. So yeah, that's an approach that works. So far, it's, it's like, like Africa, Africa don't need them. need them. They need us. So why do we make it seem like they are on top of the world when we don't need them? What's the situation behind it? Like, why? Could you say that again? Could you say that again? Why do we feel like, like it seems so far with, with what I'm learning and what I'm, what I'm hearing from people, what I'm hearing every day about Africa, and obviously I'm African too. Why do we, why do we as Africans feel like we need them? Because it's not like we don't need them. We can make everything that we need. We're sufficient. We're self-sufficient in Africa. That's how I see it. I agree with you. We're self-sufficient. I agree with you a lot. But there are some, there are some, there is a whole lot of structures that's been put in place to actually hinder this progress. And one of the greatest um, of this Structures is the educational system. It's a, it's the fraud. It's a big fraud. It's a big scam, right? The educational system currently happening around the world. It was put in place to actually distort your mind. It was put in place to actually bamboozle you. It was put in place to actually indoctrinate you rather than educate you or educate us, as I would like to say. Right? Because um, you see, we have been taught what to think and not how to think. So we have been taught to think we are not enough. Wow. And guess what? The world is a consumerist society, right? Wow. And you must sell something. So some people even sell lies <laughs> because that's all they've got, right? So it is the same, the same structure that allows you to actually sell a makeup to a lady because you have to make sure that she learns or thinks that she's not enough. Ooh. It is only when she accepts and conceives that idea that she's not enough the way she is with her bare face until she applies that. Do you get the idea? Yeah, yeah. but well, why, why, why does it, like, like the idea come, come from, from her not being enough? enough? Do you, do you think, think we African, African thinks we're not enough? enough? Or, or do you think... think let me give you let me give you this. Let me let me let me give you this real life situation, right? I'm sure you've always heard about saving. Save, please save, save for rainy days, save for this, save for that. That's one of the greatest calm. And I'll tell you who that benefits. The banking system. Right? The banking system. And I'll tell you this. If you do not save your money, how would they revolve? How would that their business or their endeavor revolve around? on a day-to-day -day basis. How? They use your money to make a lot of money. They use your money to control the world. They use your money to actually control, corporations control the world. Where do they get this funding? Where do they get this finances? From you and I. Because we say we have been bamboozled to think saving is what's going to save us. Right? And on the flip side, the real essence of this is to actually earn more. It's not about saving more. It's about earning more. And I'll put this into perspective for you, right? If you earn $5,000, that's a good payment in the United States. You'll agree with me. Like, like uh, over, over what time? Over what time, though? A monthly? Every month. 
Okay, Most, that's a good yes, pay. that's a good pay. That's a good payment, right? In the United yes, States. Oh, today. But guess what? what? But guess what? It's probably going to take you 30 years to buy a Ferrari. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. That's, that's what it's all about. So basically, it is. It, it now brings you to what I said just a moment ago. It's really not about saving because you have to save all of that for about 35 years. Like like to get a Ferrari. Are, so really, it's not... Say it again. I said, this is how I always think. I always think. In the world, there's people who, who have Ferrari, Lamborghini, name the cars, name whatever car you, you want to know. There's people who have these things. And uh, they're not cheap, they're expensive. And some people don't make that much money of a car. Like, it's worth a car. They don't make that much... The cars what a year. So, so I'm curious, curious how, how these people can, can be able to afford all these cars with that, like you know what I'm saying? And, and somebody can not make that much in a year. Some, some people will never never drive a Ferrari in their whole life. life. And I'm, I'm curious. curious. That's that's, that's, that's my purpose. purpose. That's, that's my purpose. purpose. I want to know how are these people making that money? So I'm trying to make that money. So basically basically basically, like they say, information make the world revolve around. You know, right? So basically, um, I think I think um, there are two bases. There are two bases, right? Your network and your information. Yeah. And in fact, I'll say it all revolves around your network because that would even bring you more information. That constitutes your horizon. And I have a saying that wherever you are at the time and wherever you want to be is literally as a result of the people you've met and the people that's met you. For sure. Right? And I'll put this into perspective. The more information you have, the more powerful you become. Oh, yeah. Right? I'll tell you something Donald J. Trump did. Donald J. Trump literally buried his wife on his golf course. And you know what that saves him? It saves him a lot of tax. Because why? Wherever you have a symmetry, it's supposed to be tax-free. Cemeteries don't pay taxes to the government. So he literally buried his wife on his golf course. And that's a huge multi-million dollar property. Wow. So that's a hack. Yeah. So another thing that people tend to do is a lot of people go buy blings and diamonds and this and that, and they pay a lot of heavy taxes on that. Right? Yeah. But guess what? If you are smart enough and you have so much information, you get to realize that if you actually make any of this expensive jewelry of your company logo or your brand logo, you are covered. You don't have to pay as much as someone who has just gone to put their name. I don't know if you get my point. I get it. I have a brand too and I'm working on it. And this is my brand right here. And I'm thinking Perfect. One, day, one day I'll probably, yeah. I'll, I'll, obviously I want to put into into perspective of everything I do, I do on my brand payment. So basically, the payment will come out of my pocket, it will come out of my brand's pocket, so I can pay off the taxes. Literally. So I'm sure you've heard about tax, um, tax evasion. Oh, yeah. Legal. Exactly. Exactly. So there are so many mechanisms. There's so many mechanisms. There's so many. But I would say to you that, um, and I want you to take this away today, and everybody that is watching, right? One second. Um, One second. Our networks. One second. Someone's going to write up. Hold on. Give me a second. Right. Give me a second. Yeah, so I was going to say something, and I said I want you to take this away, right? Yeah. This is very important. Yeah. This is one of the secrets, right, that we all need to know as young people, right? Yeah. You see, one of the most, uh, I'll say, the most, the most advanced technology, yeah. 
in the world is the human mechanism. Right? And I'll say to you, the most resourceful capital in the world is the human capital. Right? So as such, it brings me to what I said earlier, that wherever you want to be in the world and wherever you are right now, it's basically as a result of the people you've met and the people that's met you. Come to think of it, my mother never met my father. I would probably not be having this conversation today. Definitely. So really, it is important that we work endlessly on our networks. It is very important. It is very pertinent. And it is very instrumental to our progress and to our success. Yeah, I'll leave you with that. That's, that's, that's definitely one thing. A, a big one. A really, really big one. And I appreciate everything. You told me a lot about what You told me a lot about, about, about our people, how we can make things happen, and about taxes. You know, how just people just go buy taxes. Like, it's so, so mind blowing. I watch one of Donald Trump's, one of Donald Trump's, uh, uh, what's it called? Is the election speech before they elected him? Like a couple years ago, and, and he was saying that, that he, he, he admitted on live TV that I don't pay taxes. And, and, they, and so, so they asked him, obviously, which is the people in the line. He said, Because you know the way I do it, and if you know, if you do the same thing, if you try and block me, you block a lot of people around you that makes money of doing this stuff. So it's like, it's people, it's about people who you know. Because if you know them people, like, it's I think, I think it's all about knowing more about the secret because if you, you know, know some people that don't put you on, it's a different. But exactly. if you put you on into their little life and how they how to go about this, you get to know because right now Donald Trump, I feel like like if he goes down for not paying taxes, there will be a lot of rich million the rich million people that go start that goes down for not paying taxes, and just it's just this is money makes the world move. In my opinion, money makes the world move. If you have money and you know people. You, you get, get around. You, you, you even get away with things, things with things, things that you shouldn't get away with. And you know why? There's a lot of lacuna in law. So there's such thing called lacuna. That's the guy. Oh, yeah. The loopholes, oh, yeah. basically. But in all, holistically, it all starts from the mind. It all starts from the mind. Fair enough. My one, one question before I let you go for the day and you have an amazing ass day. Since, Since you've been you doing all this, what is your highest experience, experience like that? The, the peak of your experience, the best experience, the best experience, experience, the best experience or what's your lowest experience, experience? Like, where where do you feel like people, people, people mistreat you or people, you know? Because obviously, obviously, you, obviously you, have you have to have people who treat you nice to the peak and people who treat you bad. And how does how how does that change your life? Oh, so in honesty, I'll just say to you, um, the best is still to come. <laughs> Let me put it like that. The best is still to come. We're still striving for betterment. You know, uh, that's the ultimate. You know, and I'll say to you, um, the pursuit, the the joy, right, of success is actually not at the end of the tunnel. It is in the pursuit of happiness. Sorry, I mean happiness actually doesn't reside at the top. It is actually in the pursuit of success. I don't know if I'm making sense. Happiness actually lies in the pursuit, right? It does. I'm sure at a point in time you have had a certain, uh, you've had something on your bucket list that you intend to check, right? Yeah. Tell me how you feel after you've checked it and a day after you've checked it. You feel normal again. Yeah, you feel accomplished, but at the moment you feel accomplished. Exactly. You feel accomplished, but you feel normal again. But put you in a seven star hotel. Like the best hotel in the world there is in the world at the moment. It takes you only five days to feel normal again. Yeah, yeah but if you feel me? having that experience, that's because time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm, saying I'm going somewhere. I agree with you. I agree with you. But I was trying to go somewhere, right? Well, what I'm trying to say, in essence, right, is that however it is, no matter where you get to, yeah. you feel normal again. Right? Right? But where the genuine happiness lies is the pursuit of that. 
is the gradual day-to-day -day process that leads you to that point, that builds you up to that pedestal of that pinnacle, not the pinnacle itself. The little day-to-day you know -day success. You know what? He, like, like, obviously, obviously, because you, you're a very successful young, young man, and, and I'm going to say it this way. way. Uh, what's, what's it called? called? If you... Like, like you, you can say, say these type of things for, for people who have, have never been there, they, they will never agree, agree with you. you know and I'm saying because they've never been there, he's, he's, he's never a feeling that they had. But until they have that feeling, because I watched a movie not long ago, I watched a movie not long ago, and it's about oh, just you know, like so it's so so basically it's a, it's a, it's a it's a metaphor word, like you know, like you know, like matter. So people are in this matter and they play video game. And, and obviously, obviously when, when they, they get, get to the finish line, line they, they just disappear. disappear. Like, like the character, character disappeared. So, so I'm asking, is it the point of the word? Is, is he for us to be successful or for us to change the feeling of being successful? Is the question because when you when you, when you successful when you get to that top, when you successful when you get to that top, what else? That's the question. What else? Exactly the point. Now you're gaining right. What else? That's the question. But I'll tell you something. Human wants became or becomes at a point in time, it, is, it has always been insatiable, right? But the truth about success, because success is also relative. For some people, where you are at the moment is their own definition of success. Do you agree with me? Fair enough. Good. 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 Exactly. So where you are currently is some people's definition of success, right? At a point in time in your life, you were looking forward to this position you were as you are currently. I beg your pardon. Amazing. Right? Of course. Exactly. So really, the moment you get into that part or into that, into that moment, you begin to feel natural again. You begin to look for the next thing. Right? And I'll play you a very a real life situation or real life scenario. Right? You've seen people buy fast cars and you know buy this and buy that. And the next thing they want to do is buy the now they, they, they now look forward to the next or the latest fast cars, right? Yeah. And when they when they have more money, when they become a little more successful, they tend to want to go for a private jet, right? Yeah. Right? Now when they have more money. They tend to want to go for a new version of a private jet, right? And what happens when they have even more money? They tend to want to go for a yacht. You feel me? Yeah. So, so really, really, it's in the pursuit. The real happiness is in the pursuit. I'll tell you a story or a back story. And this was from one of the richest women in the world. Oprah Winfrey, that you and I know, right? She was asked a question, a very profound question. She was asked what holiday or what Christmas holiday was a most, the most happiest Christmas holiday for her in her life. She didn't mention two years ago when she was already rich. She mentioned years ago when she had nothing, bro. Why though? Of course, she explained. I can't, I can't um, remember uh, categorically what she explained, but she actually explained experience, right? It was the profoundness in the experience that brought about that depth of happiness, right? Trust me. Now, let's put this into perspective. You already have $100,000 in the bank, right? And I give you just $1,000. You wouldn't feel you'd appreciate it. Because, of course, you're not an ingrate, right? But guess what? Guess. Now, look at it on the flip side. I am giving someone who has never touched a thousand dollars in their life, a homeless person, a thousand dollars. Do you think you want to quantify, or do you think this happiness, if being able to quantify, if quantifiable, do you think it is the same? Do you think it is going to be balanced? Probably not. Exactly. Exactly not. So really, and that person who's homeless, right, and you're just giving them a thousand dollars, it means they just checked a milestone in their lives. You know, they've touched or they've had access to their first one thousand dollars. 
right? Yeah. And they now look forward to another. So for they you, look forward to another $1,000. So, and it's about the same thing yeah. with you and I, right? So if the day you make your first dollar, uh, sorry, the day you make your first million, right? You actually start automatically, you start expediting actions to make the second, to make the thought, to make the fourth, to make the fifth. Do you get the idea? Yeah. So really, it's non satiable yeah. It's a hodge that is natural and it is non satiable And really, it is where the true joy and happiness lies is in the possible. As you get successful a step at a time, a day at a time, knowing that you are thriving, right? Knowing that your endeavor, the work you put in place is paying off. That is where you get your most genuine happiness from, not at the pinnacle itself. <laughs> So for you, yeah. right now, like right now, it just seems a lot of perspective about life on my, on my side. I know more about life, but I'm trying to ask. So for you, in your own words, and I don't want nothing to influence it. What's the point of life? Really, I'd say uh, the utmost essence of human existence, right? Yeah. Is I'd say problem solving. The moment you're able to solve your problem, and you're able to solve problems of people around you. That makes you worthy. That's the whole essence of human existence. Because we were born into problem. Right? So we must be problem solving oriented. So if there was no single reason, if there was no certain problem you were trying to solve with this kind of endeavor, right, with this show, you wouldn't start doing it in the first place. Or you thought it was pertinent to connect the dot between the African continental and the diaspora, right? And to also inspire the young people around the world. And that's one of the reasons why we're having this problem. That's, a, that's one of the reasons we're having this conversation in a nutshell. Am I right? For sure, for sure, for sure. So really, it shows you are problem solving oriented, right? There was actually a fiasco of having conversations with your loved ones who are miles away from you. And some people decided to do what? You know what? We need to have something called a cell phone that we could make calls with, right? Mm -hmm. Some people think it is going to cost, it's going to cost you a lot of time to actually ride on the back of a camel or on the back of a horse to Nigeria, crossing the Atlantic, yeah. right? Before you get here. And they thought it was pertinent to create something called an aeroplane or an aircraft to fly and save you time. And guess what? That's one of the greatest inventions because that saves you even more time. And because time is the currency of life. So these are people who are problem oriented. So who are problem solving oriented, right? So the moment you're able to solve your own immediate problem, yeah. the moment you're able to find your niche, the moment you're able to find your purpose, yeah. you'll be able to solve other people's problem as well. And that right there is the essence of human existence. Good. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Before I let you go, because I know I don't want to take too much of your time. I know you're busy, man. You got so much going on. What is the message you're giving for young people out there today? People who's watching, people from back home, people from around the world. What's the message you're giving? I'm saying to young people around the world that we need to learn. I think the world is becoming a mediocre world where we think it is fine to be a mediocre, right? But I tell you this, there's so much ongoing in the world and I can categorically tell you that virtually everything you think you know is a lie. So we need to all strive to actually seek genuine answers to genuine questions, right? We need to know truly what is going on in the world so we could emancipate ourselves largely and be able to chart the right course, right? And be able to know who we are. Like they say, man know thyself. That is very pertinent. A lot of people don't even know who they are in the first place, right? 
And yes, unfortunately, yes. that is happening to a lot of our African brothers in the diaspora. They have been marginalized for way too long. They don't know who they are, right? So I'd say we need to strive to know who exactly we are, what our purpose is in life. Okay. I think I'll just leave us with that. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing this call to happen, letting people learn. I appreciate your time. I know because time is money and time is currency, like you said. I appreciate it. Right. I don't want to ever, ever take it for granted. And I'd like to say, I'd like to say one last thing. I'd like to say that everybody watching should at least endeavor to come to the African continent at least once in their lifetime, because here is the cradle of humanity. Yeah. You need to come to Africa. Forget about all of those propaganda you see on the media. 80% of them are lies about us. Yeah. This is where the world begins. This is where all of the resources in the world reside. Virtually all of the resources in the world. We can go on and on. Gold, diamond, cobalt, uranium, ore. Everything comes from here. Your coffee comes from here. Your tea comes from here. Your... Your chocolate comes from here. The cell phone we're using, the device we're using to actually make this conversation or make this uh, uh, call, actually the, the current battery technology in all of the Teslas you see and all of these things, these raw materials we're getting from Africa, this is where the crude oil come from and all of its byproducts, right? So you need to come to Africa. You need to experience Africa, contrary to popular opinion. Africa is a very beautiful place. You need to be here. We are ready to welcome you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for having, having me again. I really, really appreciate it. I'll right. to catch up with you in the future. Well, but without thinking much of your time, I appreciate, I appreciate it. And I will definitely, definitely, definitely get you. I would like, like to get you back, back on the stream any, any, any time down the line. Whenever you free. Thank you so much for having me. I am uh, very humbled. Thank you so much. Me Cheers. Me too. Thanks to everyone watching. Right. Appreciate it. I have a great one. Yes. Enjoy the rest of your day. We're out. Peace. Stop. Right. Peace. Deuces. Oh, yeah, yeah chat. chat.